I had a little fun this morning. I was watching uh, Sam Cedar's program on uh, on the Twitter feed. He's got a great show. One of my uh, former compatriots, comrades from Air America days. God, those were the days, my friend. Um, here we are. Uh, it is Deborah Burks's turn in the barrel now to feel the wrath of the orange ape. This happened today. The ape criticized uh, Dr. Burks in a tweet this morning. After yesterday, when she warned that the pandemic is, in her words, extraordinarily widespread in the United States. Ooh, how dare you? Oh, my God. Now, Trump and two other uh, White House scum have publicly attacked Fauci, Dr. Fauci, as you know. The uh, tweet this morning marked the first time that uh, Dr. Burks, who is the coordinator <laughs> of the White House Coronavirus Task Force. Yeah, it's the first time that she has drawn publicly Trump's disappointment, his pissy attitude, his five-year-old tantrum throwing. The, uh, the meltdown with the orange ape comes uh, as, as the country continues to be ravaged by coronavirus. There's no other way to put it. More than 100, what is it, 152, 153,000 U.S. citizens dead, 4 million, more than 4 million cases and then you have this crazy son of a bitch, the ape, Trump, consistently lying and misleading. Anything that Trump says about the pandemic should be discounted immediately because he is a sick, lying bastard. He really is. And he's, he, he, he continues to try to get the schools and businesses to reopen. This man is, is a, a, a one fascist wrecking ball. He wants to destroy the country. Just remember, remember the 3rd of November and be prepared. Anyway, according to CNN at their website, Trump tweeted this. So crazy Nancy Pelosi said horrible things about De Dr. Deborah Burks going after her because she was too positive on the very good job we are doing on combating the China virus, including vaccines and therapeutics. In order to counter Nancy, Deborah Burks took the bait and hit us. Pathetic. End quote. The ape. Now, what happened was on, on uh, CNN on Sunday, on State of the Union, De uh, Dana Bash was hosting, and she was trying to tell the public, at least that part of the public that was watching State of the Nation on CNN on Sunday, or State of the Union, I should say, she was trying to tell us that the pandemic has reached a new phase. This is not a static pandemic. This is dynamic, and it continues to, I don't know, I think it's like pushing, remember when you were a kid or maybe as an adult, you have a balloon filled with water and you squeeze it and it pops up over here and then you squeeze it there and it pops up over there, right? That's what's going on with this virus. Anyway, this is what she said. That was just gravel in, in the orange apes scrotum area, I guess. This is what she said, quote, what we are seeing today is different from March and April. It is extraordinarily widespread. It's into the rural as equal urban areas. And 
that, that was when she suggested, and if you listen to the Saturday Sunday program that I do, you probably uh, heard me mention this, the Sunday show anyway. She suggested that some Americans in multi-generational families should start wearing masks inside their homes for the obvious reason. You have a bunch of oldies living in your house and you're out and about to any degree. You want to come home and kill them? <laughs> Oh my God. So that's what she was, that's what she was saying. And the orange ape loses his shit over that. She did not reject a warning by former FDA commissioner, Dr. Scott Gottlieb. You've seen him. He said there could be 300,000 coronavirus deaths by the end of the year. Adding, or she added, anything is possible. That's a quote. Anything is possible. Oh, boy. Now, Scott Gottlieb was part of the uh, Trump administration until Trump had him removed because Dr. Gottlieb was trying to follow the guidelines laid out in science. First, tell the truth. And medicine. First, do no harm. None of that works with the orange ape. Now, Burks also responded to remarks made by uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi uh, on ABC. She was on uh, the uh, George uh, George Stephanopoulos program that was being hosted by, um, you know, um, what's your name? Come on, Mike. Jesus, I've never been able to remember names. I just can't. Uh, Martha Raddatz. <laughs> See, it pops up eventually. Martha Raddatz was substituting for George uh, or Judas Stephanopoulos, as he used to be called. And uh, Raddatz was talking with Nancy Pelosi. And uh, Pelosi said she didn't have confidence in the task force at all. And none in Dr. Burks, she said, the coordinator because the orange ape continues to spread disinformation. Pelosi said this, quote, I think the president is spreading disinformation about the virus, and she, referring to Dr. Birx, is his appointee. So I don't have confidence there. No. End quote. But then Birx, uh, who must be, uh, I, I don't care for her because she works for Trump, and I think that anyone who works for Trump has to leave their integrity uh, on the front porch someplace. But she was defending herself on Sunday on CNN when she said, quote, I have never been called Pollyanna-ish or non-scientific or non-data-driven, and I will stake my 40-year career on those fundamental principles of utilizing data to really implement better programs to save more lives, end quote. Okay, but you see what's going on here. Burks is responding to the criticism from Pelosi. Rather than Dr. Burks standing up to this sorry, sick bastard Donald Trump and telling him that he's a liar and going in front of the American people. What's wrong with Burks and Fauci? Uh, Trump can't take their medical licenses away from them, can he? But what's to prevent them? from holding a joint news conference, along with several medical personnel who still have their integrity. Like Sanjay Gupta would be a good one from, from CNN. And, and maybe Redfield, the uh, uh, Trump appointee to head the CDC. You know, maybe get these people together where they can all come to just let the American people know, hey, listen, the man running this country is a goddamn liar. This is what we're facing. This is what we need to do. If you listen to this orange ape, there's a good chance either you will die or someone close to you will. Now, uh, seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be uh, engaged in hyperbole here, but what is to stop four, five, six well-known medical personnel who have worked around the ape from holding, you know, just notify the networks and CNN and MSNBC. We are going to hold a news conference and we'd like everyone to cover it. You know, goddamn good and well, they would. 
I wonder if that would have an effect on anybody. Uh, I mean, a positive effect that people would finally realize Trump is a liar. He's an amoral son of a bitch who no more belongs in the position position that he's in than than Putin does. (laughs) Whoops. Now, as CNN reports, Burks has been able to develop a close relationship with the Trump White House. Now, how do you do that? Unless you you kick your integrity, don't leave it on the front front porch, you kick your integrity to the curb. You agree not to say things when the ape says things that are just patently, ridiculously, grossly stupid and challenges medicine and science. You agree you are not going to say anything. You're going to let the son of a bitch make those statements and let them hang in the air where millions of Americans, the sick bastards, will believe it. That's what Burks has done. That's what she has done in developing this close relationship with the Trump White House. Now, that has had the net effect of lessening her uh, her, her reputation among a, a number of public health experts, according to CNN, and rightly so. Like I said, she's avoided openly criticizing this administration, which she knows goddamn good and well they're lying. And they're saying things that susceptible people, people who still think that Trump has something for them, will believe. And she doesn't say anything. And then Anthony Fauci, who's taken a more uh, uh, public-facing role with his media appearances, you know, he doesn't have to get up on that goddamn stage with Trump and Burks and, and, and a bunch of clowns. So he doesn't. He has media appearances that Trump can do nothing about. But he, in doing that, he's gotten, uh, he's earned, you might say, more irritation from the orange ape. Ooh, the ape doesn't like that. Oh, no. And remember last week, the ape openly attacked Dr. Fauci and questioned uh, why Fauci's approval was so high. Remember? And then he said, and nobody, I, I guess nobody likes me. God damn, in Forest 10, can you believe? Well, quit saying that, Malloy. And then this thug, this thug, this grotesque mafia Person Peter Navarro, the White House trade advisor. Oh, is this son of a bitch dirty? He wrote a USA Today op-ed slamming Fauci. And Navarro claimed, quote, Fauci has been wrong about everything I interacted with him on. Nice sentence, you dumbass. That's what that, that's one of the things he said in a US Today op-ed. So the question would be, what the what the hell is wrong with USA Today providing a, a, a platform for a mafia type like Navarro, who is during, doing Trump's bidding in trying to lessen public uh, confidence in Dr. Anthony Fauci. What the hell is USA Today doing? What is wrong with so many media outlets in this country that they give a platform to these either mafia-style thugs who, who work for Trump of whom Navarro is, is, is the lead, or half-witted morons who have sold their soul, like William Barr, or this evil son of a bitch, Mike Pompeo, who is out screwing the world in Trump's name. Why? Why does the Times or the Post or USA Today or any newspaper of record give these people a platform? They're liars. They're thugs. They work for a gangsterish fascist named Donald Trump. Let these bastards have their moments on Fox or so-called One American News or, or some of these QAnon uh, fantasy websites and, and conspiracy dumb shits. I mean, that's where Pompeo and, and, and Navarro And the Nazi Jew, Stephen Miller, and the rest of these bastards belong. That's where they belong. 
Hi, Truth Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcasts. You have your choice. You can listen to the ranting with the audio podcast or listen and watch me lose control with a video podcast subscription. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com. And never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.